Hello, and welcome back to the Food Storage Guys podcast. This is Jim Brewster. And I'm Dan Baldwin. Together, we are the Food Storage Guys. If you find this podcast useful, be sure to hit the like button, and don't forget to click the subscribe button to ensure that you never miss an information-packed episode. Today, we're going to discuss cooking with storable food. Dan, there are basically two kinds of storable food. Can you explain what they are and the differences between them? Sure, Jim. The first is dehydrated. This is the process where food is placed in a heat source with fans to remove the moisture content to allow them to store for a long time. Beans, grains, and vegetables have about 95% of their moisture removed, and fruits have about 80% of the moisture removed. The second method is freeze-dried. This is where food is first frozen and then the moisture is vacuumed away. This process removes about 98% of the water and retains the color, size, and texture of the food. How would you cook a meal with stored food, Jim? Anytime you cook your stored food, you'll need water. We discussed water storage and purification in an earlier podcast make sure to listen to that podcast too. An example of a well-balanced vegetarian meal would be beans, rice, and a vegetable. If you would like to add meat, chicken and beef are available as freeze-dried options. Beans require a little more time than other food to rehydrate, so you can either soak them overnight in cold water prior to cooking or soak them for an hour or two in water that has been brought to a boil. After soaking, the beans should be covered with water so that the water level is two inches higher than the beans. Cover with a lid and bring to a boil. Then simmer for 30 to 90 minutes, depending on the size of the beans. Jim, did you know that beans and rice provide a complete protein? No, I didn't, Dan. That's really useful information. While the beans are simmering, put the rice in a pan with a little more than twice as much water and bring it to a boil. Once it boils, turn the heat down to a low simmer for about 30 minutes. Once you've started the beans and rice, decide on a vegetable for your meal. Try broccoli, green beans, cabbage, cauliflower, peas, or sweet corn. Adding some dehydrated chopped onions for flavor and nutrition is also a good idea. Spices such as garlic, salt, pepper, or taco seasoning can help make your meal even more tasty. You might also consider making a sauce from tomato powder, buttermilk powder, freeze-dried cheddar, or Monterey Jack. Cooking vegetables is easy. Simply soak them in four times the amount of water as the food you are cooking. For example, if you would like to cook half a cup of vegetables in... For example, you would cook half a cup of vegetables in two cups of water. Simmer the covered vegetables for about 10 minutes or until tender. Of course, experience will help you prepare the various food items so that they all finish together. Bon appetit. One of the things that you will need to consider is your heat source. If there is no emergency, you can just use your normal stove to cook on. But if you are without power, you will need an alternate way to cook, such as a small propane stove, or when you run out of propane, a good wood-burning stove. So we have some nice propane stoves available, such as our Coleman two-burner camp stoves. Those are great and easy to cook with when the power or gas is out. I'm thinking that someone could use the barbecue grill they already have, as long as they have enough propane or briquettes to last for a while. Yeah, Jim, that would work if there is nothing else available. They should just be careful of plastic or rubber handles near the heat. A good wood burning stove is important as a propane backup because even though propane is pretty reliable, eventually you will run out of propane. A standard house wood stove is a good option if you plan on using it to heat your home during the winter. But not all of us want to invest two to three thousand on a permanently installed wood stove. And that's probably not even an option if you're renting your home. We have available these great little wood stoves from Nyco that are actually really well made. They have chimneys, 
so you don't get the smoke in your eyes or have to breathe it. And you can run them outside to cook on, which is super nice in summer, so you don't heat up your home. If it's winter and you live in a cold climate, you can bring them indoors and run the stovepipe through an open window, closed in with a board so you don't let the cold air in. And you can heat your home, heat water, and cook all with the same stove. We will be right back after this break. Food Storage Guys is not just about food. We also offer many other survival products, such as water storage and purification, rain gear, first aid and medical supplies, food preservation products, cooking gear, grain mills, propane and wood burning stoves. Be sure to visit foodstorageguys.com for all your survival needs. Welcome back to the Food Storage Guys podcast. Another thing I'd like to point out, Dan, is the importance of not only being prepared, but being in the practice of using your food storage. An emergency is not the best time to learn how to cook in a way you've never done it before. It might be fun for your family to have one night per week or one night per month when you use your food storage to make a meal. This will accomplish a number of things. First of all, you will get used to cooking dehydrated or freeze-dried food, and second, it gives you a chance to find out which products you like best. Then you can reorder those. Finally, by using your storable food on a regular basis, you can ensure that it never gets too old. And finally, I want to mention that after opening a can of dried food with a can opener, you can use the supplied plastic lid to reseal it. The food will now last up to a year in your pantry. Tune in next time when we discuss how to make bread from scratch. Well, see you again next time, Jim. Hope you have a great week. Same back at you, Dan. Bye-bye. Bye. Head on over to foodstorageguys.com to see all of our options to help you prepare for an uncertain future. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the thumbs up on this video if you like this show. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please leave them in the comments below. And if you thought this information was helpful, be sure to share this show with your friends and family. Thank you.